In an announcement, Boris Johnson told the people of the United Kingdom that they were being placed on lockdown, and those changes that he announced are the most stringent limitations on British people's daily lives in modern history. In this video, we'll run through what Johnson's announced, how these changes will impact your life, and whether this will be enough to limit the spread of the coronavirus. Before we do though, I wanted to remind you that I had to stay up all night to make this video, and due to monetization rules, this video likely won't make any money. So if you want to lend us a hand, you might want to pick up one of our pin badges, with our designs covering most of the globe and the globe itself. You can pre-order one of our brand new countries or a Globe With Shoes badge over on the store. It's linked down below. If that's not for you, then liking, commenting, subscribing and sharing helps us reach more people. Thanks so much for your support. In last night's broadcast, Johnson announced a range of restrictions that were set to be placed on the British people. All over the world, we're seeing the devastating impact of this invisible killer. And so tonight, I want to update you on the latest steps we're taking to fight the disease and what you can do to help. To put it simply, if too many people become seriously unwell at one time, the NHS will be unable to handle it, meaning more people are likely to die, not just from coronavirus, but from other illnesses as well. So it's vital to slow the spread of the disease. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Only be allowed to leave their home for the following very limited purposes. Shopping for basic necessities as infrequently as possible. One form of exercise a day. Any medical need. And travelling to and from work but only where this is absolutely necessary and cannot be done from home. That means that people's ability to leave the house has been significantly limited. I know Johnson just said this, but Brits are now only able to leave home to shop for basic necessities with non-essential shops closing, take part in one form of exercise a day, that's a run, walk or bike ride, leave home for any medical need or travel to and from work when this work is 100% necessary. These changes are set to last for three weeks, after which point the government would review the rules and could end up relaxing them, if the evidence shows we're able to. However, with the current spread of the virus and the trajectory of its spread, it's possible that these restrictions could last a fair bit longer. As part of the government's new measures, Johnson encouraged the nation to visit shops and supermarkets as infrequently as possible, prioritising online shopping when possible. You should not be going shopping except for essentials like food and medicine. And you should do this as little as you can. And use food delivery services where you can. The problem is that many supermarkets are currently struggling to keep up with demand. Across the country, customers are becoming accustomed to seeing empty shelves. And despite employees' best efforts, keeping items on the shelves is not easy. The government continues to insist that there isn't a food shortage, and the issue is purely related to shelf stacking and logistics. But that doesn't make getting a week's worth of food shopping done in one trip any easier. Also, when it comes to online shopping, that's also not simple. The UK's biggest supermarket, Tesco, offers delivery slots three weeks in advance. But across the country, shoppers are finding that there's no slots available within the next few weeks. The nation's other large supermarkets having similar issues, with Sainsbury's also out of slots in many places, and the retailer even pausing new registrations for their online delivery service. All that's to say that trying to shop online and doing bigger shops less regularly isn't going to be easy for many people. However, the government felt they needed to introduce these measures because they'd become increasingly concerned that people weren't taking measures seriously enough. Over the weekend, the media was full of people still heading outside and congregating in parks and within the countryside. The government even remarked that being outside didn't mitigate concerns about the virus's spread. And it's not just these photos that spread concern. Hard data showed that Brits weren't taking the virus's spread as seriously as in other countries. Public transport use did drop significantly during last week, with London, Birmingham and Manchester seeing usage fall to 23, 25 and 26% of their usual levels. While those drops might sound impressive, other countries have seen far steeper falls, with Milan, Barcelona and New York seeing their usage drop to single-figure percentages. In fact, London, Birmingham and Manchester all appear within the bottom quarter of the Global Public Transport Usage Index. So with people continuing to congregate, 
The idea is that these new stricter rules will force people to stay inside and not continue heading out. This kind of social distancing is incredibly important in order to limit the spread of the coronavirus. Remember, the average infected person will go on to infect 2.5 other people over a period of five days, which when multiplied across all those affected could result in one person leading to 406 other infections within 30 days. However, if that first infected person would stay home more and infect only half the number of people, thus infecting 1.25 people, over 30 days, this would only multiply out to 30 people total, a significant reduction. So while it might seem like social distancing can't be all that significant, it can have ripple effects when multiplied across the entire population. The Prime Minister went on to explain how the government and police plan to enforce their new changes. If you don't follow the rules, the police will have the powers to enforce them including through fines and dispersing gatherings. To ensure compliance with the government's instruction to stay at home, we will immediately close all shops selling non-essential goods, including clothing and electronic stores and other premises, including libraries, playgrounds and outdoor gyms and places of worship, Although Johnson does discuss the measures that police can take to encourage people to stay home, these measures, such as fines, aren't expected to be widely used. Instead, many believe that the government are hoping these stringent measures will pressure people to stay home, meaning the police won't actually have to enforce these fines. However, it has been made clear that if necessary, the police will impose fines and break up gatherings which go against the government's rules. The official opposition party, Labour, have welcomed the changes, with the party encouraging the government to take these steps for a while now. Their leader, Jeremy Corbyn, remarked that the Prime Minister is right to call for people to stay home, protect our NHS and save lives. This is the right response to the coronavirus pandemic, and one that we have been calling for. There needs to be clear guidance to employees and workers about which workplaces should close, and the government must close loopholes to give security to all workers, including the self-employed, as well as renters and mortgage holders. As I said at the start, this lockdown could continue longer than the initial three weeks, and the measures used could be stepped up further. When you look across European countries, governments have gone even further to limit the spread of the virus, from curfews on citizens to closed parks, requiring citizens to hold paperwork, giving them permission to leave their homes, and even sending out emergency alerts to people's phones. With these measures still unused, the UK clearly has more leverage if necessary, and the government could use these measures to increase social distancing. Well, they could implement all but one. That's because the UK currently has no emergency alert system in place, meaning that unlike in other countries, the UK government is unable to send alert notifications to people's devices during an emergency. Countries all over the world have systems like this in place for natural disasters and health crises, with the Netherlands using their system to notify citizens about the coronavirus in recent days. The UK government might have liked to do something similar over the weekend, to discourage people from heading to parks and beaches, but despite first testing taking place seven years ago, and government reports recommending an alert system on a number of occasions, Number 10 has continued to ignore this advice. Many of the limitations I mentioned a moment ago have already been embraced in Italy, the country which currently has experienced the highest level of deaths from the outbreak. Italy has worked hard over recent weeks to try and limit social contact in order to limit the number of new cases, and the nation has warned the UK and other countries that not following in their footsteps, not introducing measures to lock down their citizens, could lead to damaging results. In fact, as many people have already observed, the UK is on a very similar trajectory to Italy, with the spread of cases within the UK following a similar track to what was experienced in Italy. This is clearly troubling to the British government who are trying to limit the disease and not follow the same path as Italy. Therefore, the government's hoping that these new, more severe measures will reduce total social contact and reduce the spread of the coronavirus in the UK. Whether these measures will be effective enough is still yet to be seen, and considering that many don't begin to show symptoms until a few days after infection, it's likely we'll continue to see new cases discovered, even if people begin self-isolating more seriously. In other news today, the House of Commons debated the coronavirus bill. We plan to release a video on this today, but due to the sudden announcement by Johnson, that video has been pushed back, 
and we will publicly release that video tomorrow morning. If you're a Patreon backer donating $5 or more a month, you can expect to see that video later today. But if you're not a Patreon backer and don't want to sign up, then make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell icon to be notified when that video is released tomorrow.